Peace, family. Today we want to talk about a sensitive subject. We want to talk about the demonization of black fathers. It appears that in American society and in Western society in general, it is the aim of the media, it is the aim of society in general to demonize black fathers and lionize black mothers. Now, we don't want to cause no confusion today, so I'm not trying to create a dynamic where it's black women against black men. I believe that we live in a time period that calls for unprecedented unity between black men and black women, black mothers and black fathers. But we have to point out what we see when we see it in order for us to correct some of what it is that's right in front of our face. And the demonization of black fathers has been such a glaring dynamic in our community that we can no longer ignore it. Now, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and for those of you who don't know what that is, that's white folks, <laughs> they came out with a study about two years ago that stated, of all the white fathers in America, all the Asian fathers in America, and of all the Latino fathers in America, it is black fathers who have the habit or the history of spending more time with their children on a daily basis. Now, this is a positive statistic about black fatherhood, but unfortunately, we never hear about that one. What we hear is that the black community is uh, absent black fathers and that 70 percent of the homes in a black community are headed by women. Now, we really don't know how true or untrue those statistics are because we do know we do know that the media uses so-called statistics for propaganda purposes. So sometimes the, the, the statistics that we hear are not even true. They're lies. But, well, Derek, prove to me what you're saying about the demonization of black fathers. Well, I, I got a couple examples, all right? I want to take a look at some of your favorite celebrities. And nobody loves... I mean, nobody is loved as a celebrity like Beyonce. Our sister Beyonce knows has what they call the beehive. And the beehive is alive worldwide. But now I'm from Houston, Texas. Beyonce is from Houston, Texas, from Third Ward to be exact. I know the neighborhood that she grew up in. I remember when Destiny's Child was a local group and all they did was community events. Every community event you went to, I don't care if it was a health fair, I don't care if a congressperson was hosting a banquet, it could be a birthday party. You saw Destiny's Child and Beyonce performing. That is how she honed her skill and mastered her craft as an entertainer. Now, question, who was it? that trained Beyonce, that guided her career, that was holding her hand and making certain that she showed up at all of these events. It was her father, a brother by the name of Matthew Knowles. Matthew Knowles, from, all I, from what I understand, is a good guy. I've met him several times. Uh, we're not friends or anything, but I know him personally. Um, we've worked with him on community issues, so on and so forth. Now, when you hear the name Matthew Knowles, very seldom does society give him the credit that he deserves for investing in his daughter's career. When you hear the name Matthew Knowles, or you Google him, nine times out of ten something will come up about his personal life. They're talking about how many children he had out of wedlock. Really things that are not even anybody's business. But they would rather give the credit to Beyonce's mother and not her father. This is one of the tactics that they use to demonize black fathers. So you think that that's just uh, an isolated incident? Let me take you a little bit further into it. Let's talk about the greatest entertainer who ever lived. You already know who I'm talking about, the great Michael Jackson. Now, Michael Jackson was beyond amazing. Michael Jackson was considered the eighth wonder of the world. Most of your entertainers wouldn't even be who they are today 
were it not for Michael Jackson. They wouldn't sing like they sing. They wouldn't dance like they dance. They wouldn't produce the way they produce. Michael Jackson changed the game. Who was it? That was the driving force behind Michael Jackson's career. Come on, talk to me. Now, Catherine Jackson, who is the matriarch of the Jackson family, deserves all of the credit that she is due. So does Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mom. She deserves all the credit that she's due. But let's just be real. It was Joe Jackson, who was a former boxer, if I'm not mistaken, who understood the discipline that it takes in order for you to master any kind of craft. He ran his household like it was a boot camp from what I understand. And though we may have disagreed with his methods, we cannot argue with the results. The man produced a, an entertainment dynasty. And out of that dynasty came the greatest entertainer that ever lived. But when we talk about Joseph Jackson, what do we say? It's Joe Jackson's fault that Michael didn't have a childhood. Well, let's say that that's true. And I think Michael Jackson had a long childhood. I mean, the man lived at Neverland Ranch um, all the way up into his 30s, 40s and 50s. And I don't know what happened in that household. And I'm not trying to make a judgment on that. All I'm saying is, can we give the man credit for what it is that he did do versus always talking about what he didn't do? Demonization of the black father. Okay. You think that's an isolated incident? Let's talk about Venus and Serena. Mm. Their father, man by the name of Richard Williams, a brother who I've had the, the honor of meeting and knowing good brother, good man, very outspoken, loves his people, loves his community, and he just don't take no crap from nobody. Now, these girls were raised in Compton, California. I'm going to say that again. They were raised in Compton. And this man, this black man, protected his father, I mean his daughters, from the Compton streets. He knew nothing about tennis. This man went and he got VHS tapes and he watched them over and over and over again. And he used them as instructional tools for how you teach somebody how to play tennis. He, he taught them the discipline that they have right now. They say this man used to look like a homeless man walking down the Compton streets with a basket filled with tennis balls and this is what he felt he had to do in order to give his daughters a leg up in the tennis game. What do we have right now? You've got two beautiful, powerful sisters who not only changed the game of tennis, but they changed the game of women's sports. But when the media talks about Richard Williams, they don't give him credit for what he did to produce these beautiful daughters. What they do is talk about his personal life which is none of their business. Demonization of the black father. I'll give you one more example, just in case you think that's an isolated event. Let's look at TBE, the man that they call the best ever. See, the man who stepped inside of that squared circle called a boxing ring and dominated 49 opponents. Nobody has ever beat Floyd Mayweather in a fair fight or unfair fight for that matter. Let's take a look at Floyd. Floyd grew up in Michigan, I think it was. He had a poor, he was, he was poor. Uh, he had a harsh childhood. His father went to, to prison at an early age for allegedly selling drugs. Now, now Floyd's father was a championship fighter. His uncle was also a fighter. Both uncles. So he comes from a fighting family. So they say when Floyd Mayweather was two years old, his daddy had him in the gym, hitting the bag, hitting the bag, the heavy bag. Then he had him in there on the speed bag. And they talked about how hard he was on his son. He made him get out there and run even when his son didn't want to run. And so even the family members used to complain that Floyd didn't have no childhood because his daddy was too hard on him. But look at the man now. 
This man is a master craftsman when he laces up those leather gloves. Nobody can be Floyd Mayweather. But when they talk about his father, they rather talk about the stint that his dad did in prison or the personal issues that he and his father have had. But nobody wants to give the man credit for creating a genius in the boxing ring. Floyd Mayweather would not be who he is today were it not for his father. Demonization of the black father. So what they would rather do is demonize the father and lionize the mother because they know the natural order of things says that the man is the head of the community and the head of the household. And when you remove the head, the rest of the family is fair game. This is a propaganda tool that they've been using for years, brothers and sisters, and we got to wake up. So so what are you saying, Derek? What are you saying, Derek? I'm saying that we have to be careful how we look at one another. See, I've given you examples of celebrities, but you got to realize that this is just a microcosm of a macrocosm this is something that happens every single day in your family and in my family so on every father's day i call it so-called father's day because it's a shame that in western society they have to commercialize everything that is of virtue and value like motherhood is very very valuable let's make a day out of it and try to find a way to make some money off of it uh same with fatherhood Beautiful concept, beautiful principle, the principle of fatherhood. Let's find a way to make some money off of it. So here in the city of Houston, every Father's Day, we host what's called a day of encouragement for black fathers. And we want to challenge other cities. If you recognize that there is a plan to demonize black fathers, if black fathers are to be encouraged and lifted up, we can't wait for the media to do it. We need to do it ourselves. So this Father's Day, you should consider hosting in your community, in your city, a day of encouragement where you just rent out the park and you just create little activities so that if there is a father who doesn't have the money to do anything with his child, just go get your baby and bring your baby to the park. We'll, we'll make sure that there's something to eat. Um, you can go and... And there'll be a basketball tournament, a football tournament. It doesn't take a lot of money. All it takes is our unity. So let's start a movement to encourage black fathers. That means if you know a black father who is not taking care of his child financially, you can beat him over the head if you want to, but that ain't going to do no good. Encourage him. If you know a black father who is not doing what he should do, Sit down and talk to them and try to figure out why and see if there's a way that you can help. Now, I'm not trying to say that we should coddle or cuddle men who don't stand up to their responsibility when it comes to fatherhood. All I'm saying is that if the world that we're living in is not going to encourage them, we have to find a way to do it ourselves. So the demonization of black fathers is real and you might think that it's isolated and it's happening in somebody else's life but nine times out of ten it's happening right around you let's do a better job at encouraging one another and let's do a better job at taking care of our children and being great fathers